So let me start the recording. All right. So again, welcome to our webinar. It's about the power of digital collaboration. So this is a project intended for teachers and homeschooling parents for K to 12. So our first uh, member of the team is, of course, Dr. Lin. It's, he's actually the reason I, I organized this webinar because he has a wonderful project that he could share with us. He's actually a professor in the Department of Information and Learning Technology in the National University of Thailand. So maybe, Dan, you're familiar with this university. And he's also a, an international consultant, a director of Network Collaborative Learning Project, a researcher himself, and of course, he is the founder of Apex Cyber Academy. We have also Mr. Justin Shell. He is... Um, actually an architect and marine engineer but because of his passion right to 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 promote community-based learning he has designed a great website where he actually connects different homeschooling um, families so that they could really work and learn together and this time he's opening this great opportunity to use his platform for all of us teachers who would like to connect our learners across the world. So you will know more about that later. Now I would like to introduce myself. Well, Dr. Lin said I know everybody. Not really, but for some, all right. I'm happy to see them actually today. Magandang um, umaga po sa inyong lahat. Ako din po ay isang Pilipino, katulad po ninyo. So just to translate that to our colleagues and fellow educators online. I just said that I'm also an educator and I'm also from the Philippines. And currently, I'm a, a professor in a state university in Shanghai, in Donghua University. And I do also some guest lecturing to other universities here. There is a French university, it's ESCA, and also it's one in Jiao Tong University. And I provide consulting services under Joshua Consulting to different um, organizations. So one of them is the English Language Studies Program. And of course, I love volunteering for APEC and my school projects. I'm also an ICQ Global Disc Practitioner, which means my area of um, expertise is also about cross-cultural communication and also about growth mindset trainings. So if you would like to connect with me, either for professional development, especially for teachers, curriculum designing, and other trainings, you may scan this QR code and connect with me on LinkedIn. So I would love to hear from you because I believe when we work together, we can do better. So our goals for this webinar, we have three goals. One is to understand what PBL is and what it is not. Second is to get empowered through digital collaboration. Maybe the question is this, is there really a power about collaboration and of course the third goal is hopefully for you to be part of PBL international community and that is where Apex Cyber Academy would come in so you will know more about this again as we go along and on this training there are three questions that we would like to answer I know the first question is what's in it for me why do I have to sign up on this webinar so I would just simply say, what is PBL? The second question is how? How digital collaboration in PBL works? How does it actually work for me as a teacher, as a homeschool parent, and of course, for your children or for your students? And the most important question is why? Why PBL? And we can add this question by asking as well, why would I change my usual teaching approach with PBL? So let's be guided with what, how, and why as we go along this webinar. And hopefully after 90 minutes or so, you will be able to come up with your action items. And there are two possible things that you could do. First one, will you be able to design your own PBL? That is great. That's a goal for us. Or for a start, maybe, you can join ACA's or the Apex Cyber Academy's pre-designed PBL. 
So there are two possible action items that you could think of for today. Think about the three questions on your screen. It's on your right. And of course, on the left part of your screen, what would be your action items? So these are the questions that we may be able to answer right away after this webinar or something that you still need to process and reflect on as a teacher or as a homeschool parent. And you will be able to hear my first hand story here as well, my experience, my first PBL. And you can see on the screen that was like in early 2000. When I was challenged to get out of my comfort zone as an educator and bring the reality of life inside my classroom. So let's start with the first question. What is PBL? So you can type your answers. I want us to work on these answers together. All right, fingers ready? Okay. So you can see on your screen, what if we integrate United Nations Sustainability Goals campaign on the environment in our curriculum? And our question would be, our big question would be, can we combat climate change? So I'm going to pose three questions. And all you need to do is type in your answers. Ready? All right, can you give me a thumbs up sign? Thumbs up, thumbs up. When you're ready, you can do it virtually or you can turn on your camera and show us your thumbs. <laughs> all right, all right, amazing, good job. All right, okay, ready for the first question? Can we combat climate change? All right, the goal is to understand PBL by answering these questions. Question one, is this topic included in your learning competencies? It's just a simply yes, no, yes, no. Type it in. Yes, okay, no. Okay, amazing. All right, absolutely. All right, that's Dan's answer. All right. Yes, most of the answers are yes. And I agree because I have also integrated this before. I'm actually an English language teacher, but I've been integrating this topic. It's very interesting how to integrate that in the language class. So second question, where will you integrate this topic? So I just mentioned my case. I'm an English teacher, but I am able or I was able to integrate this topic. Can you type in? Where will you integrate this topic? Which subjects or which courses? Okay. Life science, English, is that all? All right. Oh, that's interesting. Great, Filipino class as well. Filipino is the national language being used in the Philippines for everybody's information. And it is also a course like an English class. Math, great. French Immersion Class in Canada, wonderful. All right, the third question, okay. What approach are you going to apply to teach this topic? Oh, we have also art, good. Okay, what approach? How are you going to teach it? Are you going to Ask them to visit. Okay, STEAM education projects, wonderful. Any other thoughts? How are you going to approach this topic? What will you do? Student center, okay. What else? Okay, are you going to do some, use some videos as well? Okay, video presentation, yep. All right. Okay, so thank you for sharing your thoughts. Keep, on, keep them coming. Sky's the limit. See where their interest is and expand. Okay, that's from Evelyn Wu. Student design and collect information through surveys. All right. So we have a lot of good ideas on how to approach this topic. All right. So let's, let's look at it. I'm sure part of the approach was based also on what kind of taxonomy you are following. And for many educators around the world for many years, well, this is the revised version for everybody's information. Um, maybe you would start by, you know, recalling what they know, explain details until they are able to produce. 
So this is the Bloom's taxonomy. And from, from the, what I've experienced as well, when I was a student, this is also an approach my teacher or my, my, my former teachers really do. Creation evaluation is always on the last section. Now, what is really PBL is, of course, similar to this, the same taxonomy, but how else can we maximize this? Have you heard about the flipped version of Bloom's taxonomy? All right, so this is how it looks like. A project-based learning framework looks like the flipped version of Bloom's taxonomy. Instead of creation or the creating section will be on the last part of your lessons, of your approach in teaching your subject or your topic, it is actually at the beginning. In PBL, when you design your PBL, when you conceptualize your project-based learning, you actually begin with the end. And that is, how can students use the information they have at hand to create something new. So that is why the question for your students would be, as a teacher or as an educator parent, part of your design would be this question. What will they accomplish? That's the end point. And how will they start? So you begin with the end in mind. That's how you start your PBL project. So when you conceptualize something that you would like your students to work on, what are they trying to achieve at? And from there, that's where you will design it. Okay, so what do we need to create our own PBL? Now, part of that, of course, when we are designing our PBL is goals are clear and so is the rubric. Goals, what are they trying to accomplish? And rubrics, how will they start until they achieve your goals. Now let's say from our example on climate change, the end goal in your mind when you design this project is for them to combat climate change. So we call that the three C's. You're aiming for the students, for them to be able to combat climate change. Can we totally eradicate it? Maybe not, but can we still do something about it? So let's start applying this, uh, our own framework, the flip version of Bloom's taxonomy. So we start by creating, create. So what will they create? What kind of information do they have at hand for them to construct something new? Maybe there, well, actually, so maybe there are already a lot of researches involving climate change, but why it's not working? What else can they do? Maybe some are working, maybe some are not. So they will critically examine all this information that they have at hand. And then of course, the third step is the disintegration part. Exploring the relationships, the causes, the effects of, of the information that they have at hand about climate change. And then once they have understood that the relationships, they have critically examined all about the climate change information that they have, how are they going to apply this new information that they have in mind in combating climate change? And when they apply, of course, things make sense out of this information. There is like, voila, like, you know, like there is this understanding. And once they have completely understood what they have at hand and what they can do about it and what they can create about it, then they'll be able to remember it. Well, again, when we talk about Bloom's taxonomy, it's great, but sometimes we can combine it in another approach, a different approach. So remembering is best when if it is done in an experiential learning approach. When, they, when there is an emotion involved, when there are experiences involved, then the students are able to remember it best. So recording and publishing would also be the best way to remember their, um, their projects or whatever they have come up with. So with this approach, the flip version, learning becomes more intentional and insightful. So again, we can, we can actually integrate it with this framework. It's not just on the Steam, uh, it's not just on one course, but you could actually combine like what Dan has posted a while ago, a Steam approach, where you could combine and integrate different courses.
in the Philippines, we have classes about social studies and even values education, Filipino, that's a language course, music, arts, physical education, and health. You could actually think about it. How can we actually integrate all this learning? And this is the beauty of PBL. PBL is not just exclusive for one class. It's not just exclusive for one subject, but it is actually a project that would connect everybody together. The, the, the classes that you have in math can be integrated in science and can be presented in an English language course, for example, like writing the report or researching as a research skills and other skills that they think would add value to this kind of project. Now, part of PBL, from the steps and stages that we have just discussed a while ago, it actually involves scaffolding. So as a facilitator, okay, I'm using the word facilitator now, from a traditional teaching approach, instead of us giving all the inputs, like spoon-feeding our students, in PBL, our role is switch to a different role, and that's what we call facilitator. We do not just simply give, 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 feed, 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 feed information, but rather we're going to draw out, we're going to draw it out from the students for them to develop deeper learning on whatever course that you are teaching them. So what can be done as a teacher? If you can see from the photo here at the bottom, that is you holding the ladder, all right? It's actually about instructional scaffolding. What is it? It is a process in which we add, I would say we because we are all educators here, we add systematic supports for students in order to enhance learning and aid in the master of tasks. So how does it look like? What does it mean when we say systematic support? How do we add systematic support until they achieve the mastery level of what we are teaching? It can be a likened to this picture. There's a ladder, we're aiming them to reach the top, the clouds, but how do we do that? So scaffolding means breaking learning into manageable chunks. So it means as they progress, then we add a little bit more, more and more support until they become um, independent learners. So you can do that, for example, um, by using mini lessons. Now we were referring about climate change a while ago. In English class, I love, I love integrating this one. Do you know this character? Who can recognize it? You can type your answer. Do you know who's this guy? And he's very famous. Yes, <laughs> Justin knows. It's Lorax, the Lorax. It, it's actually a book written by Dr. Seuss. It's a wonderful book and it already has a movie. You can search on that. And it really talks about the environment, all right? And its effect to our lives. So there are many interesting lessons that you could integrate in teaching it. What else? And of course, you have mentioned a while ago your approach, right, on the subject is incorporating visual aids. You can also add, this is very, very significant as well, front-loading concept-specific vocabulary. So these are the ac academic terms that they could use in learning the, the, the courses. For example, carbon emissions, right? The word climate change itself may sound vague to them, and they could not relate to it. But of course, if we can guide them with the meaning of these words and using the right term, okay, it will help them better understand what they're trying to research, if it's a research, for example. So front-loading, concept-specific vocabulary is a necessity. It's part of your scaffolding technique that you could apply. And of course, connecting with their knowledge and experiences. In some places, there, there are environmental concerns or issues going on, and there are many, uh, we call them like those who advocate about protecting the environment. It could be a good example experience, especially depending on your location. For example, if your school is located in a mining company industry area, that could be a good reference as a topic to bring about. Or if you live in a big city, for example, in Shanghai, pollution, <laughs> the carbon emission, all right, it is also a very good reference on that. So something that they already know, but you're going to reinforce. It, it makes learning more sensible to them and more understandable. And of course, some practicing that you could do with them, maybe experiments as well, 
or actual exploring, exploration on the environment. If it depends on where you are at and modeling and demonstrating and many others. Now, what you are going to see now on the next screen is this. We call this the gold standard in PBL. Um, it, about, it talks about the seven essential project design elements. So they are seven. In Chinese, we say seven, okay? Um, I got used to this counting now. Okay, seven. Okay, but we will just use these fingers to make it clear for everybody. So there are seven essential project design elements. So when can we say that our PBL meets all these essential elements? The first step is to ask yourself, when you design the project, does it pose challenging problem or a question? Does it sustain inquiry approach? Is it really authentic? Does it make sense to the reality where my students at? For example, maybe the situation in the Philippines with tropical um, climate there may be different when they go to another part of the country or another part of the world. So the authenticity, what about their experiences, their background, um, background information about them? Do you know them? So it has to make sense to them when we talk about authentic learning. It has to be connected with their real life experiences. The, the other part, the fourth one is, does it give chances and opportunities for students to voice out their thoughts? Do they have enough choice when they decide or when they do this project? And when we talk about reflection, do they have enough time to process their thinking? Reflection is a very huge part in learning. Just like uh, one of the learning framework by Cobbs, it's about reflection. We learn best by doing, but of course, we have to take time to reflect. So do you give your students enough time to reflect and process? We should not skip the, 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 this part, the reflection part. And then the next part of this um, essential element is the critique and revision. Do you give them time to evaluate other students' work? Do you also give your professional uh, feedback to their work? And do you give them enough time to revise and improve and adapt or maybe integrate more information or new information to improve their work? So that's about the revision part. Before the last part, the public product. Oftentimes, as teachers, especially in the classroom or even for homeschool, the only audience of our students' works are us, teachers, or are we just inside the classroom, or maybe when you have a special guest visiting you, or you have your supervisors coming over to check your uh, students' works in the, inside the classroom. So it's only for a classroom display. Or for homeschoolers, it's just you and your children unless you work with other kids, but oftentimes their works are not really published. But in PBL, you give them wider audience um, because, you know, there is an advantage if the student knows there are more audience. I, I'm sure you will agree with me. When there are more audience on their project, they feel that kind of accountability to do their best. But of course, do not give them too much pressure, okay? Just the enough, enough pressure, but it gives them this kind of accountability. From my experiences, my students, it's a mixed feeling for them. They're excited, they're challenged, but they like it in the end. They may say they're stressed about it, but they're actually, they actually enjoy it, especially when they know other students will be reading their work or other professors or the community will have the chance to review their project and give comments on their work. That's part of owning it up, and that's part of accountability. It is a life skills that they also need to learn. And don't forget, from these seven essential project design elements, the one in the middle, of course, will be your guide. It's your compass. We call them the learning goals, the key knowledge, understanding success skills. In a short phrase, we call this the 21st century skills. But what does it really mean? when you say 21st century skills. So these are the skills that they will be needing in their real life, something that they will also be needing to prepare themselves for the university. I'm a professor uh, in, state, in the state university and I handle most of the freshmen. I actually design course for them. We call it road to college success. And from my experiences here for the past uh, 10 years, I've realized because my students are from the different parts of the world. They are university students studying international business in Shanghai. But one thing they have in common 
from what I have observed from teaching them this specific course, we call it the road to college success. They are lacking study skills. They are lacking critical thinking skills. They're lacking problem solving skills. They're lacking the readiness to face the reality of life in college. Especially most of our students who come here, they start to live on their own. Now my, my question to all of us here who are K to K-12 teachers and homeschooling parents, how well are we preparing them to this kind of life? How good are we? So what kind of teaching pattern are we teaching them or creating this kind of pattern in their mind? You know, the thought process, the way we teach our children, the way we teach our students, it creates a pattern with the way they process this information. So from the way they were taught from kin uh, kindergarten up to high school, that would be their, 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 their blueprint in their mind. That's what's going to guide them when they are on their own. But are we teaching them to think critically, creatively? Do they have enough life skills to support them when they completely leave our home for homeschooling or when they completely finish their education with us in K-12? I'm sure the way we teach our students now, the way we think in our mind right now, depended a lot on how we were taught when we were young. Don't you agree? So that's, that's, that's a challenge. In PBL, we are trying to teach them to become thinkers. And that will not happen if us teachers will not completely acknowledge the need to teach them how to think. We cannot think for them, but we have to train them how to think. So let's try to review one of Apex Cyber Academy's projects. And this is where we would like to invite you to participate in. If you are new to PBL, don't worry if you don't know what to do yet. You don't need to design your own project yet. All you need to do is experience it. How does it work? And from your experience in Apex Cyber Academy, you could then later on um, design your own projects. Now, in PBL of Apex Cyber Academy, there are four team projects to choose from, and they are on your screen. And we have also one category for individual interested students. We call that international journalist. And the good news is, if you participate, according to Dr. Lin, okay, the winning teams and individuals will be awarded with both Certificate of Merit, merit issued by ACA and certain prizes. Okay, that's, that's really exciting, that certain prizes. ACA will host an our award gala and conference for contest participants in Taiwan around March 2021. So let us pray that this COVID crisis will be over so we can also visit Taiwan. So again, that's an incentive, all right? Now let's go back to this project. Let's say we're going to review this and let's see if it has all the seven elements. So it's all about climate change and a battle on global warming. So if you're going to visit the website, it's user-friendly and it has all these um, features, reception, participants, learning tasks, showcase, all right, where everybody in the world who accesses this could read it and all the participants. There's also a video chat room for facilitators, for feedback, for discussion, and so on. All right, so if you're going to take one of the projects, you can see it has all the necessary steps to complete it. You have one, ice breaking, and then of course you can see the task on every, every detail, just click this button. Damaging effects, research is the third step, and of course it addresses all the questions that we call that the driving question, can we combat climate change? It actually has 10, or it can be completed in 10 weeks, all right? So if you can see from this um, screenshots of their website, even the approach is scaffolded. It's not like immediately submit your project. That's the beauty of project-based learning. It focuses a lot on the process, not on the product. So you have to accomplish step-by-step step the weekly task, all right, so that students can successfully uh, upload and complete their goals, achieve their goals, all right, in a timely manner. 
So do, does it have a challenging question, the driving question? Yes. Will it give students a chance to inquire further through research? Is it real life related? Is it in a real life context related? Yes. Does it give students a chance to voice out and make some choices in finalizing their product? Yes. And the 10 week time, one task for each week, does it give them enough time to process? Yes. Does it give opportunity for teachers, us teachers to teach them, and even to contact with our international facilitators for the critiquing and revision? Yes. Does it give a platform for them to share their work? Yes, because they have the showcase. So their skills, is it achievable? Are they, are they achievable? Yes. So PBL in APEC, check. So it also achieves the gold standard of PBL. So again, this, they, they have a lot of projects to choose from. So based on research, why do we have to, to, to apply PBL in our classes? And why do we have to join APEC Cyber Academy, for example, or design our own PBL? There are so many researches published already about PBL. It's not just the recent one, as you can see, like 2020, many years ago, right? And study confirms really how PBL impact students' learning. So based on this one, it's about on science and math and how it improves the 21st century learning. What are this? Creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication yes communication is such a huge part needed especially nowadays i know um they, there are some comments and feedback about the millennials on how they communicate but they have their own way of communicating maybe we're, we're not just able to bridge the gap with them but of course teaching them how to communicate our younger generations with the use of gadgets nowadays sometimes when they communicate face to face it's different I have also two kids here. They're mostly online, but of course I have to watch how they mingle and interact with other, other people outside our home. And this is one important skill. How would they actually express themselves? How would they actually build network for themselves? How would they actually um, create an impact in the community if they don't know how to communicate. So that's why communication is also part of 21st century learning. And this is our accountability as teachers. How do we lead them to achieve these four Cs? So furthermore, there are also other researches. And I just want to highlight here, you know, how, how it has substantially outperformed students taught using traditional science curriculum versus the ones who have used PBL. So again, research proves PBL really works. The question is, I've mentioned it's not just in this present time, we have started using PBL. It started a long time ago. So if the results are so consistently good, why aren't more schools and teachers employing this teaching strategy? Why? Have you used PBL as well if you have heard about this information before? We have two barriers, all right? There are many barriers, but there are top two. One, it is really difficult, or I would say inconvenient, <laughs> to shift, all right? The departure from a traditional teacher led environment to something new, it may be new, something like PBL. So it takes both training and practice. So what we have now is just like a very quick one, but if you want something more in-depth approach in project-based learning and how to do it, I can coach you. I am willing to help you, just connect with me. It really takes both training and practice, but above all is our willingness as an individual to participate and change our approach in teaching in the classroom or inside the homes, inside our homes for homeschoolers. So my question, my fellow educators, how willing are you not to do the PBL? How willing are you to inconvenience yourself to do the PBL? All right. So think about that. We can be the barrier itself. All right, so, but think about it. It takes time and commitment. PBL two, or PBL the barrier number two. 
Designing PBL takes time. It's really, really not that easy. It takes time to create content with differentiated performance channels. Because the first step to do this PBL is you should have a good understanding of your curriculum. So we're looking at your curriculum, for example, if it's like 10 months, let's do it, let's say monthly, your learning competencies, how well versed are you? You need to review that from the beginning to the end. Now, which part of your 10 months in teaching your students would you create your PBL? So I'm going to share with you my own experiences later, but initially I did it for quarter, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. So I was able to do four PBL in one school year. So probably some of you, <laughs> this is how you look right now. Um, and ask this question, trying to figure out, hey, what Cecilia is talking about? I do not understand. What are you talking about, Cecilia? Okay, so I just want to move forward maybe. It will, it, maybe it will add light to you as I share my first PBL experience even before this 2020s lockdown. Um, the, the pandemic nowadays, of course, it's very unfortunate and we are praying hard that it will be over soon. But try to think of it, um, I call it a paradox, but for us teachers, it, it, you know, it, increases, um, it increases the challenge on how we could actually improve our teaching style, how we can actually improve our way of communicating with students, and that is through online. Um, I know there are many countries in the world who are imposing digital learning, online learning, even in our schools. We've started using it online since it started in China. So for my case, I've started teaching online full-time uh, since February. That's the second semester here. Now, for those who are new, how to do it? So this is your chance. Let's, let's join a PBL project or a project-based learning. And let's do it on Apex Cyber Academy. So how does it work from my case? Of course, we have these seven essential elements that we can now read and available these days. But when I was um, learning about PBL, nobody taught me it was actually PBL. I never knew it was a PBL because it happened earlier than 2020. So I'm going to share with you my teaching practices and how it fits the design, as you can see on the screen. So back then in the year, what year was that? 2005. I always tell my students this um, quotation by Dodd Lynch. I always tell them we don't see the world the way it is. We see it the way we think. Now, but the reality shows, hey, I'm teaching in a public school. I used to teach in Caraga region, but one city, and it goes to National High School. And during that time, we had around 9,000 students. And I have, I meet my students in the classroom, minimum of 50 at least, average 50 students inside the classroom. And I was the only source of their uh, dictionary <laughs> because during that time, Technology was very scarce, especially in schools, all right? So for those who have, uh, who, have, um, who have been teaching for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. In public school, I remember back then, in the year 2000, I used to see the words quality education painted on top of the rooftop of the schools. You know, it became like a puzzle in my mind. I don't want quality education to remain on the roof of the schools. <laughs> It doesn't have to stay that way. It has to be felt and experienced by my students. So I was challenged and I really tried hard how to do it. And I have envisioned my students to be part of global learning that time. We have uh, participants here. She's a witness on how I integrated this part and how I ask help from the uh, technology teachers to train my students because I was also not that literate that time, but I knew how technology like internet could create an impact to my students' learning. So this was the reality. Our ra ratio that time in our computer laboratory with around 9,000 students is about 16 to 19,000. Imagine that. There were only about 16 good working computers during that time and with students with around 9,000. What else? 
my students, most of them, they're not well off. They have limited finances and they have no skills. So what am I going to do? Is it possible? And I thought, okay, I have a good book, a story to cover, to talk about the reality of life. I used the book, The Little Prince. And then I thought, okay, maybe I could design something that could help them. So I am able to connect this project, a global project about the little prince and matched it with the learning competences issued by our Ministry of Education, or we call it Department of Education. And then I told myself, how? How will my students reach out to students outside the world, their world inside the classroom? How will I make learning more like a reality for them? So what I did was this. Because I believe when we do this thought pattern, we have this kind of wisdom that we share with them. That we have to be careful in what you think. Because your thoughts run your life. So what kind of thought pattern I wanted them to develop during that time? Whatever approach I'm going to teach them, I'm sure it's either going to be useful or not at all. So it was during this year that I've decided I have to get out of my comfort zone. I have to believe in that vision. Though it was very impossible, it seemed impossible that time, but I knew it's possible. So what I did is I, I made everyone involved. I collaborated with teachers. Shella is here, Mr. Ledo. <laughs> I, I remember working with them, Ms. Aida Riola, Ms. Aida Abad. These were like my former colleagues and they're all great technology, computer and technology teachers. I was not really good in the use of computer that time. I barely much know how to use internet. But I believe I don't need to, to carry the, the burden alone. I have other resources, and these, these are my colleagues. So I talked on their expertise. I asked the community support, you know, how we can access computers, how, we can, how can we give access to computers. So I talked everybody who could I possibly tap. And of course, with the help of our principal that time, that was Mrs. Kang, Corazon Kang. And she said, go ahead. So I got an approval. So I, I prepared my students for collaborative learning because that's the nature, that's the culture you create in PBL. It has to be done collaboratively. So I, I integrated lessons on leadership, how to be a team player, empathy, and respectful culture. So along with the other lessons. So it took us three months to complete the project. And within these three months, all of these were being prepared at hand. And of course, because of the success of our local collaboration, Agusa National High School that time collaborated, a public school collaborated with a private school in Manila. It was a Tineo that time. And then because it was successful in the first quarter, the BBL ran again on the second quarter. And we had our partners in learning from Romania and also from the UK. So all because their works were published. And this is the idea when we talk about publishing, our students' works, it should not just be within the walls where we are teaching them. It should be made available to everyone because whatever we teach them, it could also create an impact and a difference with other children on how they learn and with other teachers on how they teach. So from local, it went international. And because of this, it encouraged me to put it into a research. So I, 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 I wrote my first research on PBL during that time. So what did I do? Of course, aligning my lessons, my project to the core competencies. I prepared my students for collaboration. I involved the community and the stakeholders for this project. And of course, it was well planned that it has to be feasible to be completed within the given time. Every task you do, be sure you do not over, over add on their work. It has to be within a real, uh, real manageable time. So just looking at PBL from Apex Cyber Academy, if you're going to click the details, you will see all the tasks are listed including the rubric. Why I am showing you a part of ACA here, it's all because you also need to prepare this in advance before you call for collaboration. We call this call for collaboration. It is a phrase that we use. 
if we would like to involve other students outside our classroom. So before you post your invitation to other teachers for collaboration, everything must be well prepared. Now, just a summed up, what are the groundwork that you need to prepare in advance? Goals and rubrics must be clear and known to your students as well. And that includes the marking criteria, what are the specific tasks they need to accomplish, and what are the due dates. You have to be clear on all this in your class. And of course, part of that, your roles, your partner collaborators' roles, and also your students' roles. Resources, what are available and what are not available, and what can be done if they are not available. So they're also listed on the screen. Now, what about the collaboration and communication process? This is where the culture of collaboration takes place. Online, all right? How often would it be? What platform to use? If you're going to work with us here in China, for example, in mainland, just for everybody's information, um, not all websites are accessible in the sense that you have to use a VPN. So if you're going to use Google Chrome, for example, or Google Classroom, you will not have a chance to work with our Chinese students, for example, who are in mainland, except if they're willing to use a VPN. So we are using WeChat as form of our easy access uh, during online classes and some online follow-ups. So it has to be clear, it has to be uh, uniformly agreed between you and your partner schools or partner collaborators. Now offline, because PBL, you don't need to do it all the time online. This is where blended learning comes in. What are the tasks to be completed individually and as a team? And who completes what? And when to submit, all right? And of course, you can add where to submit it. Is it via email? Do you have a specific platform or host to publish and upload your work? Apex Cyber Academy has all this for the uploading, all right? Now support. Of course, there's nothing perfect in this world. So as a teacher, you should have this backup plan. What would be your strategy? What kind of support are you willing to share with them? What about your partner collaborators? What kind of support they could provide? And so on and so forth. So just looking at the screen right now, lay the groundwork in advance, plan well the collaboration and communication process. In that way, your project management in PBL, it will be successful. So you have your core competencies considered because we have to achieve them. Uh, we will not lessen the standard, but we will make learning deeper in achieving these core competencies, and that is through PBL. And then the collaboration culture, that's so significant. Management of activities, your approach, your teaching technique, it has to be a scaffolded student learning tasks and activities. And how will you assess student learning? Portfolio base is a great pro, uh, is a great way to assess students' learning, especially for PBL. And what about your plan? How do you intend to engage more your students? How will you intend to engage your partner participants or partner schools and coach them at the same time? So these are the essential elements for us teachers to consider in the preparation of PBL. So part of that experience way back in the early 2000s or mid of 2000s, um, my project was given recognition in the USA and I just simply shared with them how we work it out together. I didn't do something big or great, but because of that experience, it inspired me to show to our teachers across the world that there is a way to impact education by delivering quality teaching to our students. And gladly, they, they, they heard my story and gave me that recognition. I also published work on that. It was published by Kent State University, um, edited and uploaded by a, a friend of mine whom I have met in the project-based learning through Apex Cyber Academy. If Dr. Lin remembers, it's Mark, all right? He's a Dutch American partner in learning as well from Ohio. So he helped me share my project. So that, that, yeah, that was to do double mic. Yeah, right. Very That's good. right. So he helped me upload this project and everything was incorporated. My first experience in Agusa National High School integrating PBL and also my other project base through Apex Cyber Academy. That was during May 2005 up to 2007. Um, so from this research, I was able to prove that project based learning indeed students learn by 
applying knowledge and skills through an engaging experience. As I have said a while ago, learning becomes more meaningful, impactful, if it is experienced by our own students. It has an integrated approach in learning. From my, from my story, you have heard as well how I involved almost everybody because we lack resources. I lack some skills, my student lacks some skills, but we would like to work it out together. So I had some teachers from the science and technology department, even from social studies department and the, and the other projects and how parents and other business owners of computers, the internet cafe, worked and helped us you know make the project a reality for my students and another one it has proven as well that pbl indeed provides opportunities for deeper learning in context and that's for the development of important skills tied to college and career readiness i i've been in touch with my students recently uh, for those who have participated way back in 2005 to 2007 indeed um, they could not forget what we have done. They were only like second year high school in the Philippines that time. So that's equivalent to middle school. There were only like seventh and eighth graders. They were only like 12 to 14 years old. But how they share their experiences with us, for me right now, with me right now, it's still unforgettable and how it helped them to prepare and earn their degrees in the university and give them a successful career. So this is like a testimony for you, my fellow educators, how PBL worked. Uh, it worked for me that time when technology in the schools and at home were so scarce. There were no smartphones during that time, no iPad, no gadgets. When I was just the only source of, most of the time teachers were the only source of information during that time. But PBL worked during that time, earlier, early years of 2000. So what more it's already 2020 it's more than 10 years ago or about 15 years right so everything was achieved that time so let us remember pbl is not about homework it's not about quizzes it's not also exam or case study like problem based it's not all about ppt all right or brochure making or maybe sculpture making but it's actually the process of learning that works best you could actually still integrate them they can be part of your PBL teaching practices, all right? Remembering the seven elements here. And you can uh, collate them together, design them seamlessly, work together in a portfolio of PBL. And of course, project-based learning, we have to remember these elements work together, this theoretical framework work together for us to have a better teaching and learning framework for our students. So is power there is there power in PBL with digital collaboration? Hmm, maybe you're thinking about it. And maybe the other question that you would like to say is, can I really do this? I would say yes. If I were able to do it with so many limitations, including my skills that time, the more you can do it. So I would like to encourage you to sign up and join us on Apex Cyber Academy. It's launching on September. So let's hear Dr. Lin to tell us more about it and to be followed by Justin to tell us how we can actually connect more partners in learning in the future. So thank you so much. And I hope you have learned from that uh, brief uh, lecture or presentation. So take it away, Dr. Lin. Oh, thank you. Give you a call. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I think you all could clear my, hear my voice, right? Uh, again, uh, I'm Chi Xian Lin. Uh, uh, I'm, right now, I'm in Taiwan. And uh, the, in the beginning, uh, in addition to welcome all of you to join this webinar, uh, I would not really would like to uh, thank you to uh, Cecilia. The presentation really wonderful. I have been known uh, Cecilia for over probably 10 years. I think 13 years or 14 years. Yeah, she always very impressed. Wonderful and excellent uh, educator. And uh, also improve herself every year. So every time when I talk to her, I learn a lot from her. Uh, from uh, uh, her is, uh, presentation this morning, I believe everyone here I think all, we all have that kind of confidence about uh, project-based learning. And uh, look at my hair. <laughs> I'm also a kind of practitioner of PB at all. Uh, over, I think I'm working on that for over 20 years. 
So that's why I'm, I have gray hair. I don't know in your culture or in your, in your country. Uh, here, if you have gray hair, that means you are old. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, so everyone should uh, have that kind of confidence about PBL. PBL. Uh, I also would like to say, uh, since I'm practicing on uh, PBL and I also uh, doing research about PBL, so I, I could say that uh, PBL is the future of education. I think this is kind of a, a consensus among all over the world. So uh, most of the advanced country, they are push, uh, they are kind of, they are pushing uh, uh, PBL to the school very hard. So uh, it's a kind of uh, our opportunity here. This morning in our webinar, we learn about uh, post-based learning. And, and now I'm going to uh, provide you, I think Cecilia already mentioned about that. Uh, if you are new, uh, uh, it's difficult to design your own uh, project-based learning. And so we, we are provide you a kind of opportunity for you to have kind of experience to practice about project-based learning. And if you are an experienced teacher, or if you have done that before, uh, you also need to come because I think, uh, wait a moment, let me uh, share my screen uh, first. Okay, wait a moment. Okay, here's my screen. Okay, could you see my screen here? It's about a PowerPoint, a PowerPoint about uh, uh, the, the, the project we are doing right now. As I mentioned, if you are an experienced teacher, uh, our project are also very unique because uh, uh, we provide that kind of international learning environment. I, I believe you all uh, remember, uh, since we mentioned about uh, about course, uh, uh, golden standard, the seven, element uh, in the seven uh, element uh, over there have one very important uh, element is about uh, audience so if you uh, put your project-based learning online and you could have that kind of a public audience especially in our if you join our program our project uh, you will have uh, a lot of international audience that will be good for your learning so uh, please join us now I'm going to give you a very brief introduction about our project. Uh, you see uh, on the screen here, uh, our project will start from December 6th, so you'll start very soon. It's about 10 weeks. It will end, it, it will end uh, uh, in November 10th. And this is a kind of a government project. So we have a team over here. Uh, so Chishen is over here. And you will see uh, uh, in the right of the screen over here, we have a four school. Uh, in our team, and uh, I kind of uh, we work together. We work together with the school team uh, to uh, design the PBL project all together. And uh, one of our team here is a uh, Seaman School. Uh, uh, probably you uh, notice uh, one of the teacher is over here. Uh, he is a uh, Dan Daniel. Daniel is uh, from Canada. Uh, Daniel is also in our team. So he he also help us to uh, prepare to design the course. And then uh, we are all going to run the, uh, the project all together. So this, uh, as I would like to mention again, this is the, a kind of government, government project. So we have a very rigid, uh, very rigid uh, kind of project. So come join us. And uh, wait a moment, okay. I need to use my keyboard. Okay, uh, I also would like to emphasize about the goal of our project. Yeah. We all, all believe uh, in uh, project-based learning, uh, but uh, the project or the goal of our project or our program, we also want to emphasize about global competence. I think we all know the, the importance of the global competence, especially right now, we are kind of suffering from uh, COVID-19, that kind of pandemic. It's a kind of global issue. So uh, we need to uh, give our children a kind of opportunity to work together, to be a kind of global citizenship, to have that kind of global citizenship. So this is one of our goal. Uh, we would like to create that kind of global international community. So let's provide that kind of opportunity for kids to work together. And uh, the way we uh, to reach our goal is uh, that you know, we uh, implement project-based learning and uh, SDG all together. Uh, probably, uh, if you don't know about uh, SDG, you could do uh, 
and uh, 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 I mean the, the website, you can find a lot of information about SDG. It's a kind of United Nations, that kind of project. So we combine all together, and uh, we are trying to create a kind of global learning community with ICT, ICT me, internet, and digital can, uh, technology. This is our strategy. That's why we create this project uh, to uh, support uh, our children to work all together. And uh, okay, here, I, I probably I don't have a lot of time to uh, introduce the detail of, about our project, but I would like to mention you, if you are interested, in, uh, if you want to participate, I, I believe you should, you should uh, participate in, uh, in our project. So we all come to join us. But uh, you need to have that kind of register to our project, our website first. I will show you a little bit. And uh, okay, if we, I, I believe uh, the people here in our webinar, they are, I see most of them are teacher or a parent of the kids uh, between uh, grade five to grade 12. But uh, it's not limited over here. If you are younger, if you are older, you are also welcome to come. <clears throat> but uh, when you access our website, do remember, do you remember, try to use a computer with Windows system, with Windows system, because uh, our website, the functionality are very kind of complex. If you use uh, the other kind, uh, for example, if you use uh, Macintosh, probably it's not quite compatible. So I encourage you to use uh, Microsoft uh, Windows, uh, that kind of platform to access our website. Uh, so you need to register first. And then uh, uh, here have all the kind of uh, procedure. Uh, I would like to emphasize about your official ID. And when you, okay, probably since you are following the, I mean, for like you are not deep outside of Taiwan, so you don't need to put on your uh, official ID. But but when you register, please use your real name because, as uh, Cecilia mentioned, if you complete the 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 project, I will, we will provide certificate. I, I think we need to use your official name, so please use your real name. Uh, okay, this is all the process about registration, and after the registration. Uh, you also need to pass a game, a kind of online game. They will uh, teach the kids about the kids or student about the safety or the honesty or the behavior about the online, that kind of behavior. So that's quite important. So after you complete uh, these two steps, then you could choose here. Uh, as uh, Cecilia mentioned, uh, we have that kind of group project. We have individual that kind of project. Individual is a kind of journalist. So, I, but I encourage you to come as a team. So join our the 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 deaf one. The deaf one. Uh, it's about striving for even SDG. Okay, I will mention that a little bit. But uh, when you come to join this project, uh, you need at least five students. Uh, a team. The member of a team is between five and twenty. And you also need a consultant. Here we don't like to use team a, a term of, uh, as teacher. Uh, because it's a project-based learning. So teacher is a kind of traditional term. So consultant, just like a facilitator. So you, the role of consist, uh, uh, consultant is just like a teacher. You need to help the teacher, the group, uh, to run all the process of the project-based learning. So let's, uh, wait a moment, let's uh, change the screen again. Now I will back on to the website over here. Wait a moment over here. Okay, here. Okay, you will see over here. This is uh, the screen uh, of our website. Uh, on the top over here, you will see the, uh, the, uh, the, the address of our website. And uh, you need to, as I mentioned, uh, you need to uh, register first. I already have an account, so I could uh, log in. Wait a moment. Okay, then log in. Oh, sorry. I mistype my password. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, if you are interested, uh, this is our website, uh, log in, and then over here, uh, you can access to the course over here. I think uh, Cecilia already introduced in detail about our four courses over here. You can choose one uh, uh, to join. And, uh, over here, learning space over here. Over here, have an international journalist. This is about international journalists. So uh, you could also encourage your student to join the 
uh, this program as an individual student. And all the detail, well, uh, let me knock out first. I would have to mention, wait a moment. Uh, I couldn't, okay. Why? Wow, it's a uh, block my screen over here. Uh, okay. Wait a moment. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's uh, not easy to control over here. Uh, I believe you also could see, still see my po uh, my screen over here. Let me uh, not sign out for sign out. Okay. Uh, let's go make, go back to the home page over here. Uh, in the home page, uh, please uh, uh, pay attention over here. Uh, please. Uh, in the home page over here, if you scroll down the screen, you know, you will see over here have it's a it's a touch that kind of material over here. Uh, over here. Click over here. You have two uh sections uh, over here. Dr. Lin, I, I, we lost your screen. I think you might oh, need to, my screen. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let, uh, let me do it again. Thing. Okay, let me share again. Wait a moment. Okay. Uh yeah. let, let, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Uh thank you. Thank you for mentioning that uh, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh wait a moment. Let me uh, do it again. Oh, Hey, I kind of lost my, okay, wait a moment. I kind of lost, okay, okay, let me do it again. Uh, thank you, uh, wait a moment, uh, here. Can you see the screen now? Everyone, uh, Justin. Yeah, we can oh, see, good, we can good, see. Good, 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 very nice. You can look at over here. Uh, we put all the introduction material uh, uh, on our website. For example, here, click at here, you will see, you know, just tell you how to sign in and tell you where to access. This is all in video. And even we will tell you uh, how to form the team. I think it's very important. How to enroll in the program. And uh, we also have PowerPoint over here. Uh, we also have PowerPoint, PowerPoint over here. And the other one is about uh, the courses. So we have uh, four courses over here. It's all in video. Click on it and you can download the video. They will introduce the detail about the courses. Yeah, this is uh, all the introduction materials over here. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, here we have all the document over here. Click over here, you have a uh, full document over here. If you are not uh, familiar or you are interested, please come here and download all the material over here. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is an international uh, that kind of program. I don't think we could provide that kind of training for everyone. That's why we already prepare all the necessary, that kind of document over here. So the people come, if you are, if you are interested, just come here and download them. And they will tell you all the detail about how to join the program. Okay, and uh, before I go, uh, I would like to show a video. I don't know. Uh, Cecilia, do, you, do, we, do I still have time? Uh, otherwise, I, I would like to show you a video over here. Let me uh, stop the sharing again. Let me uh, create the screen again over here. And uh, I here have a video. I would like to share with you. This video, uh, is the focus is about connection base. And this is one of our purpose to create this project. We like all the kids, a lot of work connect together and this video will show you the advantage uh with the kind of connection that kind of best than it so it's very short just uh, take a look of the uh, video okay yeah it's about project basically it's emphasize to put the project online implement project online social environment that's the advantage of our project Social environment. We have a kind of international environment. Okay. It can include anyone with ICT technology. Yeah, we don't need wait for introduction, just in. Connected world, yeah, why? That's what we are doing. Meaningful. Meaningful and powerful, you see?
that your we uh, in our part we provide all this kind of functionality. Yeah, we have kids. We have also have all the expert in our project, so we are going to work together. You see over here, question the expert work as a team. Share with the world. That's a very key term over here. Share with the world. We let's let's understand it together. So uh, wait, uh, let me uh, oh, wait, wait a moment. Let me oh, sorry. Wait a moment. Uh, I need to your ring. Okay, let's come back over here. Let me turn off this one. Okay, and uh, uh, this, as I mentioned, this is a common process. So we have a kind of evaluation. This is a competition. Uh, if you uh, complete the project, uh, if you have that kind of good performance, uh, as Cecilia uh, mentioned, uh, we will provide you a certificate. Every kid and every member. Uh, we have a certificate. We also will provide a uh, award or a prize. Uh, it's uh, include uh, uh, six hundred US dollar as a kind of stipend to uh, the, to the teacher. Because I believe, uh, as Cecilia mentioned, uh, it's not easy uh, to take on the, that kind of project based learning. So it's a kind of gesture to thank you for teacher to join us to lead the student uh, to work as a facilitator or a consultant. To work together, to work along with uh, with with your team, I believe it's a difficult job, but it's a challenging job. But it's uh, I think it's a worthwhile worthwhile. I think it's good for all the kids, all the students to join the project. So please welcome and join our project. Uh, so uh, this is my presentation. If you have any question, I believe uh, it was in our website. You will see my uh, email. You can email any any time. Uh, otherwise, I think I will pass my uh, microphone uh, to uh, Justin. Justin, now it's your turn. Justin. Sounds good. All right. Um, as, uh, first off, I just want to thank everybody for, uh, for coming to this uh, webinar. Um, Cecilia you went over the basics of uh, PBL and, and how it works. And then uh, with, with Dr. Lin's presentation on, you know, how his group is using uh, PBL uh, to educate groups of kids around the world. Um, I'm going to talk about my project, which is, which is called My School. Um, the company's based out of the United States here. And uh, let me first give you a little bit of background about how I got, uh, how I started the program and what, um, what it's all about. And then uh, we'll get into how that applies to uh, this specific project uh, that, that Dr. Lin and his team are working on. So um, my school, I guess, started back in about 2017 when I was looking at homeschooling my daughter. For those that aren't familiar with homeschooling, it's uh, uh, widely used in the United States uh, and growing um, exponentially now because of COVID, um, but was increasing before that as well. Um, and basically all it means is that uh, it's a legal framework where parents can take the ultimate um, responsibility for their kids' education, and they can use any resources they want uh, in order to make sure that they get a robust education. So I said, okay, well, you know, I, I don't want to do everything myself. I can't do everything myself. What resources are in our community? And what I found was that there were, you know, private educators, there were excellent organizations, and even just groups of parents all around us in our community that already, you know, formed this robust learning community that it was very hard to find. And so um, in 2018, I started my school as a way to just map out resources. And um, so with, with that grew over time and uh, we, we built a platform so that you could then share and you know, connect anybody with their local learning community and then connect learning communities together. And uh, back in about May, I was lucky enough to um, link up with Cecilia and, uh, and that learning community then kind of crossed borders. Um, and we started a project where Cecilia had a group of kids uh, out of China and uh, we got a group of kids out of uh, from nine states and Washington DC from all over the country. And uh, these kids got together in a, a small project learning environment and um, 
and they you know taught each other about um, you know cultural holidays from from each country. And it was it was a really really rewarding experience, and I got some great feedback from the parents that were involved, uh, and and they all want to do it again, so, uh, Cecilia. So you you're up whatever. You um, but so that kind of brought us uh, on on the international stage, and um, and that continued to be our focus through what we call our culture class series, is trying to connect uh, students from around the world to each other. And so um, I'm going to go over in just a minute, you know, the mechanics of how you're going to use the platform to uh, to build your team or how you can use the platform. Um, but first, let's just go over a couple terms. Um, I, I have a programming background, so if things get too technical, work on the Q&A and you can, you can ask more details. But pretty much we're, my school is the platform, and you're going to go on just like you went on ACA's website, and you can register. And uh, that just means you have to put in your email address, and then you get your own profile. And when you, you know, you can customize the site based upon the, the inputs you put in um, to your own profile. So, so that's what you're going to do when you register. And then those resources, pretty much anybody can become a resource and say, you know, I have something valuable to offer the learning community. Um, and, you know, this is a little bit about me or my organization. And uh, those become the resource members that then get mapped out all around the country so that people can find, you know, where, or around the world, really. Uh, and people can find them to, so that they can connect to their learning community. And then the last bit is, you know, the, the class listing. Or for us, it'll be, you know, people that are trying to form their team. You're, you're technically going to host a class um, where you are the team leader, the consultant in this case. And, uh, and you're going to make a listing that, that talks all about the project, whichever one of the four projects uh, that you want to lead. And, um, and then people can find that public. Um, listing and you can send it out to people who might be interested post it on Facebook wherever you want and they can sign up through the my school platform and say hey I want to join your team um, so how does that look in practice uh, I'm going to share just a, a brief video on how that actually looks and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through the process uh, so that it'll make it really easy everybody can see my screen now All right, so our goals are just to register yourself, create that resource profile I mentioned, and then post your uh, listing so that people can join your team. So here, this is what the myschoolathome.io platform looks like. Just go to register, just like you would on ACA. You put in your name or username, whatever you want to call yourself. That'll be public information. The email address you want to use that is not public and the password. And so when you do this, click on register then you're a functional part of the site. So you can go to your dashboard and this you know, saves all the information that you put in. And today we're gonna to show you how to do an individual registration. That just means you as an individual um, can provide something to the, to the learning community. And so you know, uh, we'll just say this resource's name is Allison. She's putting an address, hiding the address just uh, for a little bit of um, uh, uh, privacy matters. Um, if you have an educational philosophy, you can add that. Homeschoolers in the U.S. are kind of big on deciding which educational philosophy. And then if you want to provide religious edu uh, education as a part of your teaching, just mention that because some people will want that, some people won't. Um, so we're just all about transparency. Uh, and then just a little bit about it yourself. You know, uh, if you were doing this for an organization, a little bit about the organization, but just so people have a little bit of background and they can find out more about you before. Um, for registering for one of your, or for your team. Um, so in this case, she's got teaching experience, homeschooling experience, um, and, uh, and then she can just add a little bit more information. Those are the subjects she typically likes to teach. You know, uh, that's more for informational purposes. It doesn't hold you at anything. And then any other um, information that you want to include, uh, you can add down there. And if you have a phone number you want as public information or a website that you have, you can put that in too. Submit that, and now you've created your resource. So you can add a photo as well, just to give it a little bit of personality there. Um, 
and it helps people to kind of connect with you more easily. And so there you go. I'll say that is, that's Allison's profile. And so when anybody creates a profile on there and, and puts in the address, um, it creates a, a profile page and then also a point on our map. And so, so that map, you can browse around anywhere and just, uh, you know, find other resources in, in your community or, or look around and see what's around you. So this is what the public profile looks like, a little bit of information about you. Um, and then uh, that's, that's what allows people to, to kind of connect and, uh, and say, okay, this is, this is someone that would be really cool to work with. So uh, that covers how to, uh, how to make your resource. And now if you go back to the dashboard and, and go back to your resource profile, once you've created that, you'll have the ability to host an online class. In our case, you're hosting this class as a, as a way of building out your team. So, so that, that team is, is your class listing. So let's say that, uh, that Allison is doing with their daughter and they chose the, the Fighting for a Better Earth project. So you put that in as the class title. So they wanted to meet every Monday for you know, the full duration of the, uh, of the class. And they're going to they're gonna meet once a week just to, to, to go over everything. And <clears throat> Then the students can work the rest of the week on their own too. Uh, uh, we'll just say they're going to meet from 12 to 1. <clears throat> this just kind of gives a general guideline to anybody who's interested in joining to make sure that might fit with their schedule. You can always do whatever you want after that because you're meeting on a third party platform or in person. So you can either charge a direct amount or if you're not comfortable with that, you can do a pay what you can and they can say, you know, this is valuable to me that you're doing this. So I'll, I'll uh, donate $20 to the uh, to you to, to lead this team. Um, put in an age range you want the team to run at, the total number of slots. They'll say her daughter was filling one of those slots, so she put in one for the slots currently filled. And then just some information about the, about the course. Uh, and, and all this information is kind of provided in those documents that, uh, that Dr. Lynn showed you from the ACA website. Um, so you can pull all the information right off there. Uh, or if you have any questions, you can contact Dr. Lynn or myself or Cecilia, and you know, we can help you uh, answer any questions about the course itself. So well, once you finish uh, filling all this out, um, and uh, we have some of the, some of the places that um, you can just choose uh, our, our default uh, options for it if, if you don't know what to put in. And then, as you mentioned, the certificates will be given out at the end. Uh, winning teams will receive prizes. Uh, you can even drop in the, uh, the ACA website, the APEX website there, uh, so that they can have a, a reference directly to that link. All right, and so you've done that, and now you have a post uh, a listing for the class. Check out all the details, and this is what people will see when they go. Um, check out your class. Let's say someone wants to go and they said, okay, let's book it. I want to do this. I want to be part of this team. I'll sign on my son, Jameson. We'll put in his name, you know, uh, birthday, put in an address here, um, parent's name, and uh, uh, an email address, phone number, and that's all the registration information. And then if they wanted to make a payment, they wanted to donate since you choose the pay what you can option, um, they can make a donation and put in their credit card information on the next screen. Uh, or if they're not uh, donating anything, you can just confirm the booking right away. So that's it. Now they've uh, signed up for your class. Uh, they'll get an email confirming that they signed up. You'll get an email confirming that someone signed up for your class. And you can go to your dashboard at any time and go down there. And there you go. You can see the, um, the booking that just came in. You can email them right from the site, uh, find out a little bit more information about them. And, uh, and that's about it. So that's, that's the plan on how, how, <clears throat> sorry, um, how you can use the My School platform uh, in order to form your team. And uh, you know, the, the idea behind the, uh, uh, the Culture Class series is just to connect people on a, on a global stage. Uh, so you know, there's possibilities for, for other um, uh, classes on the Culture Class series as well that, that will allow um, people to connect from other countries and, and, and chat directly. I think that that's a great way of, um, you know, reaching out to people that you would never normally speak to or uh, learn from in, in a context that you never expected. So that's about all I have. Um, one thing I did want to mention, the platform is kind of optimized for the United States. 
that you saw when you were putting in addresses, it automatically geolocates you, you know, puts the point on the map where you put in the address. It actually kind of disguises the location slightly, but um, if there's enough interest on the global stage and other people who want to use this resource and say, you know, you can contribute resources of your own or suggest ones that, that are uh, useful places to learn around you, um, you now this could be something that, uh, that expanded um, farther outside the United States. So any questions about that? If you're interested in using it, uh, you know, globally, shoot me an email, um, info at myschoolathome.io. Uh, you can always find that at the website, website as well at myschoolathome.io. So that's all about all I have for now. Um, and I guess uh, I'll turn it back over to Cecilia then to, to lead the uh, Q&A if you got anything. All right. Thank you so much, Justin. Okay. Kindly type on, on the chat forum or chat box your email address. Uh, Dr. Lim and I have already posted our email. All right. So you have heard Dr. Lim and Justin. And you know what, my, my fellow educators, <clears throat> when I was still teaching back then, uh, in my experience, one of my biggest problems was where could I pose so I could invite other teachers to join me? On my project I usually had that issue because I didn't have really a platform that's ready made available so Justin you just provided that kind of resource for teachers if they would like to create their teams from the different parts of the world if they would like to promote their project with homeschool parents and other educators and teachers then we have my school now for the apex cyber Academy it, it made my life easier, to be honest, because all I need to do is to match them with the required competencies and go deeper from there. You know, so you have already the needs that you have. So fellow teachers, if you have questions, you can type it on the chat box right now, or you can simply unmute your microphone. Now, if you are comfortable to show us your faces, go ahead and turn on also your videos. So anyone who has a question, you can unmute your microphone, you can uh, raise your hand virtually so we could call you. And if nobody is talking, just simply unmute and talk. I think Dr. Beltran would like to say something. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, sir, before I throw my questions, let me first give an acknowledgement to you, especially the uh, proponent of this activity. And this is really my first time to join an international webinar. So that's why I'm really excited to learn also about PBL. And I am proud to say that for my remaining nine years in teaching uh, service in our school, it's not too late for me to practice and to have a quality type of teaching to my students using PBL. So I learned about the session, ma'am, sir, and thank you very much. So I have here several questions that I like to post. At Camarini Sur National High School, Naga City, especially that I am teaching research, Practical Research 1, Practical Research 2, and as well as the increase immer uh, immersion and investigation. So in this type of project, ma'am, sir, we shifted from basic research to action research. It is because of this type of pandemic. So considering the PBL, I, I personally acknowledge this type of learning uh, mode, some of them, especially the approaches, were uh, being rendered by me, but I really don't know that I am using already the PBL. So in this type of learning mode, ma'am, uh, sir, would it be possible that my students with their individual output uh, wh when it comes to entry for their for for their uh, output, are we going to segregate the topics or the project that they are going into, especially that they have this kind of research process, 
we will have to segregate their areas. For example, this is along environment. This is along uh, social concerns. So that is for my first question. Then another thing, if we will have to send an entry, there is there a registration fee that we need have to uh, pay? And also, I have this kind of consideration in my mind because we are starting the class by September. Uh, by October, rather, sorry. By October for grades 11 and 12. So how can we conceptualize an entry that the students are still uh, need have to think all about the process? So one last question, ma'am, sir. Can we also request for a recorded video of what we had this morning, if it would be possible? So that's all with, uh, with regards to my question. Thank you very much po. Maraming salamat po. All okay. right. Uh, okay. Uh, probably I answered the question first about the registration fee. Actually, this is free. It's free. So okay. you don't need to pay anything. So we are come to come. And uh, as uh, about your research courses, uh, if your students have work, they want to share, uh, I encourage them to uh, go to uh, uh, international journalist program. Because students can go to their individual and they can share their work over there. And we are going to try to organize a kind of international community to share to, uh, we, over there we will allow every uh, student to share what they have uh, all together. Uh, so they don't need to come in uh, as a group, especially uh, if they have more flexibility, you know. But if you join the Project Based Learning Project, we have four courses. And we have 10 weeks, that kind of uh, learning period. Uh, it's kind of rigid. And you need to follow every week's assignment. But if you go to uh, international journals, it kind of have more flexibility over there. That's my response to your, your question. You're welcome to come. Please uh, take your student, lead your student, come to experience uh, the, that kind of very special, unique learning experience. And uh, yeah, uh, Dan or Cecilia or Justin, do you have any response? Uh, to Dr. Uh, to, Beltran. Dr. Beltran, Beltran, or Beltran's question. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Cecilia. Uh, That's my response. Okay, Justin, maybe okay. you can answer the, no, the last question yeah, you, and the other questions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let you go first, and then I'll, I'll take uh, the questions that are on the, on the message board. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, you go ahead. Um, okay, so let's let's answer first Dr. Beltran's question. She actually posted four of them, right? So the research question has been answered and also the fee. Um, as for the availability of this webinar, it is actually recorded as what we have said at the beginning. And Justin will send us the contact links via email. So don't worry, it's on my school YouTube channel. Now for, for the other question, um, you were saying there were two concerns, right? Uh, about the individual works, how would it be done, right? Um, but when we talk about project-based learning, there's always this driving question. Let's say, for example, how to combat climate change. And the possibilities, you will have different answers because you said like topics or themes, right? So in my perspective, if I were to do that in my class, for example, in research, this is the good thing. We think together. So from, from whatever they could create, because we start with creation, they could create from that, from that uh, specific driving question, you would be able to identify, all right, so which team members would be going together according to their passion, interest, and background knowledge with your direct supervision. That could be another approach. And I'm sure Dan is also one of our facilitators in Apex Cyber Academy. And of course, you could also answer the questions, okay? So just for everybody's information, um, he's the one who introduced himself from Canada and working in Taiwan right now. All right. So the other question is, in the Philippines, this is a general problem. And for, for our partners in learning now, for your information, supposed to be should start um, on August 24th, but it's moved forward to October 5, right? Now the question is, how do we start? We don't have our students yet, right? It's way too late. They're, they're going to miss. And Dr. Lin said it's very rigid. It has to start on September 6th. 
and ends at the same time because you have to upload weekly. Now, here's the thing I could share with you, okay? Because we are forming our own teams in Apex Cyber Academy. And if you really want to learn and participate, I would suggest to top your former students or even your current students. You don't need to do it within the context of the required school days. Am I right, Dr. Lin? It doesn't have to be bounded mm -hmm. with the required school days of your own schools. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And correct. even within and, uh, your own homeschool program. Yes, Dr. Lin, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. What I mean is uh, you could try to form the team first, but you could uh, kind of uh, delay your submission of the homework, something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so it's very flexible. Right. But you need to form the team first. Mm -hmm. right. Let us know you will join our project. Right. I even have recommended this to, to, to my cousin. He's actually here. He's raising his hand. I actually encourage them to, to organize all my nieces, <laughs> all nieces together. So I told him, you can facilitate. You have the facility. He is running a call center, actually. He has his own call center. And you have a very good, you know, set of computers there. All you need to do is put all, uh, gather all together the nieces. Learn the materials together and have one team. So that's possible, Dr. Beltran. You can talk because you can have at least five as minimum number of participants. Yeah. And then up to 20. That's a maximum. But the smaller group is better. So you could manage a lot of small teams in this period. And that would actually add benefit on your part as a, as a teacher. Because from then on, the time the school days open in the Philippines, for example, you are already well-versed about project-based learning because you had your pre-experience through an actual training by joining PBL of Apex Cyber Academy. So it, it will be a very timely uh, experience for all of us, especially if the school days open October 5th, but you were way ahead. So I think that's that, 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 that is one big advantage. So again, you don't need to implement it only within the context of where you're teaching uh, or within the frame, uh, time frame of your school year or your calendar. I hope we have answered your question, Dr. Beltran. Would you like to say something, Dan, to that? Yes, I definitely would. Um, I'd also like to tell her that, uh, and, and others, that you're not on your own. Uh, we have the facilitators there for a reason and if you leave them a message they'll get back to you and all of those videos introducing everything those are a godsend because they cover everything so if you take a look at some of those videos they're very informative very detailed and they basically answer all the questions I've been answering for the past year from different people so they're already there for you you just have to go and access them and uh, we're basically, you know, the ones to hold your hand through the project. So you're definitely not alone. And we'll accompany you uh, in facilitating the project for the students. Because, you know, the first time you go through it, there's going to be lots of questions. It's quite normal. But you'll find that the second year you go through it, you will become the professional and you'll be helping other coworkers or colleagues um, to do the same thing and go through the same learning process. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. You're, thank you very yeah, much. Thank answer. you. Thank you for You're Daniel. Welcome. Thank you for your support. Uh, Daniel You're is uh, uh, have worked with us uh, for a couple of years, two years, right? Two years. So she has uh, all the experience that is she is Thank you, I've, Daniel. Yeah, it. Um, I've been working with this a bit when we were in Canada, but not to this extent. This is. Um, one year ago, when uh, I started to get more and more involved, I started to see uh, where, you know, the certain things were, okay, we did STEAM education in Canada, we did project-based learning, but those were very, sh those were one, not ten oh, this we, Yes. So this is a different ballgame. And I think it's excellent for the children because it's a running record. It's a running record. And when the parents hear about this, they're so excited, you know, that the children are working on this together. And it's not just learning. It's blended learning. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. in-person, virtual, and the children are gaining all of this experience uh, for later in life, right? Their yes. careers. 
and that's and and university as well, like you mentioned. Yeah, and uh, especially in Taiwan, we, this kind of project is a part of school curriculum. It's part of school curriculum, so it's uh, they are kind of uh, have that kind of uh, very huge difficult to join the project. Yeah. And um, one thing I'd like to mention about the project is this also teaches children responsibility, accountability, yeah. and time management. Um, we're given, you know, that we're giving you that schedule. But if you fall behind on the schedule, you'll find that, wow, we, we really have to plan things. We really have to take control of time because it's all too easy to get, you know, lose control of time and get behind, as you know. Uh, mom, sir, mom says, excuse me, Po. I have additional questions which just pop up in my mind. Sure. Can I still ask for one more question, Po? Go ahead, ma'am. I just remember, mom, mom, sir, that one of the output of our students when it comes to their whole uh, in, integral uh, learning, they, they wanted to have a research center in our school for them to be able to experience a lot of their teaching and learning process in one such area, but it needs a financial support so uh, once they will have to uh, file for an entry does it also uh, does it also uh, help them to realize their uh, I mean th their uh, research output or or not in 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 this PBL uh, entry okay, okay. Uh, would you like to uh, uh, go ahead go ahead Cecilia. Okay, so that's open, yeah, because I think the context that's in your in your in your region, right? Uh, talking about research, needing some needing some finances to fully complete whatever proposals or projects you have. The one in Apex Cyber Academy is different. It actually could even be a, within your own backyard, you know, to find the resources needed, or just at the tip of your fingers. It doesn't need a lot of finances. Maybe you will just have to spend money for the internet connection. When you upload, you know, your project. But this is something really visible. And I believe that's the purpose of Apex Cyber Academy. It's just like really about the thought process. It's all about training them to think and, you know, work collaboratively. And, and Dan has already expounded about the benefits of this to the students. So no, don't worry about it. So after the session, I would really recommend that you explore the website, ma'am, so you could really see what are expected on every task every week mm -hmm. and from then on you could decide what resources you need and what other means you could have to fill in whatever is missing all right okay so i can see okay, a hand well. here uh thank you dr beltran go ahead you, um uh, ronnie briones he's raising his hand go ahead sir what's your question hello uh Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. I don't know, but uh, I'm here in the Philippines. We are uh, my cousin is uh, Miss Cecilia. Okay, I have a group of ten people, starting from uh, grade six up to K twelve. All of them are my niece and my nephews. Both of them. So. I have a call center here in the Philippines and uh, actually before this happened with me and my cousin Cecilia was planning to have this uh, online school which it does not pursue because of this constraint and the time being that uh, they have given to us and we are not also sure regarding that uh, uh, possible uh, decision by the by our president, if it is uh, still uh, by online or or on a face-to-face -face basis, so that's why that what have, uh, did not pursue our plan to have this school. So when I learned about my cousin regarding this PBL, uh, I have this uh, uh, question of. Uh, because uh, our eagerness with my cousin also to have that uh, school learning 
through online teaching is still there. It cannot be lost. So if this is possible, God help us to to just like uh, to show this uh, this mostly here in the Philippines. This is a new thing that is uh, happening. This is a new. We are we're not too much exposed on the online learning, which uh, mostly of our government uh, teachers could not cope up the requirements because only at this moment they are not ready at this moment. Frankly speaking, they are not ready because every time I ask the uh, our school the uh, the DepEd, they will say. We're just starting today. So, what I am asking is, uh, because I, I have this, uh, I have this uh, concept. I did not, I am not expert of it, but I studied on it. So, I learned from it, and I, I started to cook up the, the, the lit thing on the call center. How, how I can uh, relate to my question is that if, my, poor, my my eagerness to pursue a school, uh, a school online school, which I think it is the same with this PBL learn uh, PBL type of uh, PBL concept. Does it uh, possible for us that this this uh, platform could help us? Uh, to continue our our my my, my eagerness to one and also in relation to my to the, the this uh, I have ten one how can I register them because they are keep on asking these students they are willingly uh, also wanted to come now but unfortunately there's uh, our internet connection was lost last night only due to this uh, incident happen. I have to go after our conversation now, I will have to go with our internet provider. So that two questions. One is that it go, does this PBL could help me to in my future uh, future uh, interest of forming a, 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 a online classes and the second how can I uh, how can I I have 10, ten uh, nephews and uh, niece that wanted to but, but how can I register them by is this by group or by individual so thank you would like to answer okay uh, uh yeah probably I could answer the first and uh, the second question about register uh, probably you come in late. Otherwise, uh, please go to our website. We have all the supporting material over over there. I, I could explain over here. Uh, uh, the uh, registration in, video. Yeah, over there we have the kind of regi registration ah. video and the material or the document over there. Please read. Uh, read that. And uh, it, it's, it's not difficult at all. Yeah, actually, I already registered in your. In your epic uh, one, while we are talking, I already registered, and also my my school, I already registered. While we are talking now, I already oh. registered. Uh, yes, but uh, but 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 my set of my my question is that how can my my other my this uh, ten uh, individual ten students wanted to come? I is it uh, I will. I will have to register that one by one, or yes. is it only by me? You by have one? to you have to register them one by one. One by one. And okay. then after you register them one by one, each student as well as you, you have to go through the survival online training. It's just oh, okay. uh, it's inter internet uh, safety training quiz. Oh, okay. And after you finish that, then you can add them one by one to make a team. Uh, okay, uh, now I understand. Okay, okay. I think I'll, and that, I'll be answering. Okay, go ahead, Dan. Sorry, finish it. Go ahead. I was just going to say those videos on the website can show you step by step how to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. All right. So, so that answered your your second question about the registration, right? Everything was actually available yes, on the website. Now, to answer your first question, should you pursue your online learning? How can we actually support specific, specific, specifically Apex Cyber Academy? And I would also include my school. So, ACA is something like a yearly a yearly um, event that is yeah. much God willing, it will be longer than. Annual, right? annual event. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. so it's like an annual event. So you could always integrate that to 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 your school school's curriculum. And I would like to highlight how my school of Mr. Justin Shell could actually support. If you could have your teachers in the future who could really design a good PBL, and they're willing to have their partners outside or globally, my school. That's where my school comes in to connect. Your, your learners, your teachers, with other interested teachers. So I think that's how we could possibly uh, really contribute to your plans. Um, so even though you're not a full-time teacher, but your teachers in the future would be able to help you that. And your, your nieces, our nieces actually, and nephews, just like what Dr. Lin and Dan said, you need to sign individually and from then on you could form your team because each one of you should be registered. That is also for security reasons, right? And all the questions, informations, they are available on the website. That's how friendly it is, okay? Oh. All right. So thank you for that thank question. You. Now, shall we have more questions? Any more questions? That, any, any I think uh, Dan put a couple of them in the, uh, <clears throat> and Dan put a couple of them in the, uh, uh, the comments section, the chat section. Um, <clears throat> So uh, his first one was, uh, how do the parents juggle homeschooling and working during the day? Um, so um, it's, it's difficult to use like homeschoolers as a general category because there's before COVID, there were about two and a half million homeschooling families in the United States. And that probably means that there are about two and a half million different ways that people made it work. So mm -hmm. sometimes, um, uh, Sometimes they, uh, there's only one working parent. Uh, if there's two working parents, sometimes they're on different schedules and they've, mm -hmm. you know, made, um, you know, care for the younger children, work during the day, uh, utilized the uh, relationship with either uh, neighbors, friends, relatives, things like that. Um, and so everybody's got a different way of making it work. Uh, and some of them do education in the evening um, uh, or, or however they want to do it. When the kids get a little bit older, they get a little bit more uh, autonomous. Um, mm -hmm. And even some of the younger kids that, that I've uh, met at the homeschool, um, you know, their parents will assign them, this is the work that has to be done. And then it'll be up, them, up to them to uh, make sure that it's done by the end of the day or whenever the deadline is. So um, just like you were saying with time management, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them have to do that on a daily basis just to, um, because they're, they're kind of given the assignments. Um, as far as the second question you go, you posed um, was uh, what kind of support is available for learning concepts that are difficult to learn. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that was one of the reasons I, I formed my schools because, you know, there are concepts that would be uh, either better in a group environment that you may not be well suited for if you're, you know, you just have one child or two children from at different levels. Um, and so you can pool your resources as, as a local community to, to take advantage of, um, of other people's uh, specialties. Um, uh, around us, there's also, you know, individual institutions that um, specialize in math or science or things like that. Um, art and music that are, that are certainly specialties that, uh, that uh, individuals might not have. And so, so the idea behind my school is just to, you know, you can form your school out of a diverse set of resources in your area. And, uh, and, you know, save those all to your profile and say, okay, these, this is what I can use to provide that robust education. So, right. um, so there's a lot of uh, diverse resources. And then people also, um, there, there's the different options for curriculum. Some people just order a box curriculum, which is basically they, you have a box and it literally has, you know, curriculum materials for different subjects. And, and basically you just do the readings, you know, with your younger kids or just have the older kids do the readings and, and you can follow along. There's different ways to test at the end to make sure that they understood the concepts. Um, so, you know, um, kind of direct education methods that way. Um, and, uh, and so, but everybody does a different blend of them. 
you know, some will be more structured, some less structured, uh, but all these, all these different, you know, uh, paths kind of organically lead toward a, toward a, a you know, well-educated child in the end. So, um, mm-hmm. a bunch of different ways that it's done, but, uh, Every time I meet a new homeschooler, I find out a new way. So, and I'd also like to add one more question to that. Um, why is it that um, a lot of parents are going with homeschooling? Is it because of the escalation in violence at the schools, like bullying, for example? Uh, I would say um, probably about half the families I talked to, it was um, because of an environmental concern about either safety or bullying or things like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, uh, a lot of schools are, are kind of tailored toward, um, providing an education that, that covers, you know, the, the widest band of, of students they possibly can. But, you know, if your student's kind of struggling and they've been behind on concepts and haven't quite gotten to that level, they might be struggling, um, and, and need additional help. Or, you know, uh, maybe they were a, you know, a more advanced than some of the people in the class and, you know, they're really bored and, and just, you know, they're a little bit above that band and need additional support to, to make sure that they're, you know, continuing their education um, in, in a way that's best for them. So, um, so it, it kind of gives you additional customizability as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's families who've done it for that reason. And then there's, there's some families who, um, you know, wanted to, you know, incorporate uh, a lot of different uh, elements that weren't necessarily um, included in, in their local traditional education system. Um, and then there's even parents who just want uh, you know, more flexibility for their schedule and they, they travel around with the kids a lot, you know, um, and so they can still maintain that family environment um, mm-hmm. by, by teaching remotely. I've actually met a whole lot of uh, traveling military families who do it. So that they maintain a, um, you know, that, that's kind of a, this, this thing that's stable when they're moving around every two years to a different post. Um, uh, a family I know that, uh, that was just stationed in Japan for five years and came back here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. You know, so that's, that's kind of their, their stable point. Is, is this well, I can of- relate to that because my, my father moved to us to a new city uh, because he was a minister uh, back in the day. And we were homeschooled for two years uh, before going back into the public system. And one thing I missed about it being in the homeschooling, I, I missed that social aspect where you're socializing with other students and you also have a chance to join the basketball team or the volleyball team. Mm-hmm. So how do you compensate for the lack of that in the homeschooling? Do you encourage them to join community sports or? So there's, you know, everybody has a different way of doing it again. Some will, uh, in, the, in some states, you're actually um, uh, able to join your local um, school's teams if you're you know, registered in that district. Uh, other states, that's, that's not allowed, and you find independent uh, you know, uh, community sports teams, things like that. Um, but there's, there's lots of resources out there, and they're just kind of hard to find. And again, that's one of the reasons that, you know, put my school together was so that people can come on the platform and say, hey, you know, there, there are these other opportunities um, for, you know, group sports, you know, group learning environments. Um, sometimes they're just groups of parents that get together and, and uh, you know, meet every week so that, you know, their kids have that social environment or we'll do a focus on a different subject or something like that. So, um, so there, there's lots of ways that, you uh, I think we can leverage technology to, um, mm-hmm. you know, make the connections online, but then uh, have those connections then go offline and, and have that, uh, that, you know, physical interaction, the face-to-face interaction that's, that's really, or really key as well. So. Right. Well, well, that's one thing I found with our students, with the APEC Academy uh, projects where they're working together. It was also, you know, so a lot of social interaction. Some of it was virtual. Some of it was face to face. And they were coming in on on the lunch hour or their breaks to work on it together. Wow. And I didn't even ask them to come. I didn't <laughs> ask them to come. They said, "Teacher, we're here to work on the project." And they're very, very motivated. And do you, do you find that some of your students, uh, students in your program, uh, will they connect together and form a team to do this kind of learning? Um, so I guess, 
Um, we worked in just kind of diverse groups. Um, I think uh, some of the people that uh, that were in the class that, that Cecilia ran not too long ago um, mm -hmm. have, have come back to me and say, hey, you know, when is there another class going on? You know, when can we join? Uh, and so there's there's definite interest from them. And mm -hmm. they were a little bit on the younger uh, side of the, of the spectrum there. So um, right. some of them may be interested. It might be slightly over yeah, maybe, too, so. maybe um, I could also add in that as well, Justin and Dan, uh, regarding yeah. homeschooling parents, um, if I may add. Um, you know, there are actually some gaps, right? We call these gaps. And this is the purpose of the project-based learning. How are we going to fill in that gap, right? So when you talk about, let's say, basketball or other social activities that may be missing for homeschooling, if you are going to design your project base, your PBL, all right, for, for your own children, for example, you could actually integrate this kind of task to be accomplished. Because when you talk about project based on digital part, it's not mm -hmm. always online. So what are the things that they need to accomplish behind the scene, right? And what insights they could actually bring in when they share these experiences with their partner learners. So they could actually do some documentation, they could do some vlogging, for example, about their social activities that they have done. So they may not be directly working on this project, on the task with their partner learners online, but they could do that behind the scene. So I think this is just a great idea. I just love designing PBL, but, but, but just by hearing Dan and Justin talking about homeschool situation where kids are sometimes isolated, especially if the program is not well-planned, right outside the house or the perimeters of home so it, it's really going to affect the, the the education of the children so pbl is one of the answers how would you do that number one review the learning competencies number two you should have your needs assessment analysis you should have that at the beginning needs analysis so it's also including the available resources what are those are not available? What are the skills lacking? And then design what would be your PBL for these learners. And then invite, all right, look for other collaborators with other parents to work with their kids. So that is just an idea. Now I have received a question here. It's a private message sent. So maybe Dr. Lin, you could answer this. There's a question. Yeah. Can one teacher manage different teams at the same time? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, is you, you could do that. So no limit uh, for okay. the number of the team. Okay. Uh, so any teacher can have uh, as many as possible. I mean, it's no limit at all. Okay. Yeah. So it depends on how much they can manage. Okay. To, to the one yeah, who no, sent I... me a private message. So the answer is yes, you can manage different teams and different yes. topics to choose from, right? Yeah, sure, sure. No limit at all. Yeah. Okay. But, 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 but okay, only okay. as a student could only attend one team. All right, so that's clear. One teacher, you can manage for project-based learning of Apex Cyber Academy. You can sign up as many teams as you can handle, all right? Yes. But yes. for a student, a student can only join one project. One project, question. Yeah. There's another question, because there is an individual journalism. Can an individual yeah. journalist entry join the team? Project. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The intellectual is a kind of a separate, okay. separate project. So it's, no, it's all right. It's all right. You can all do right. that. And for each team, they should have one team, uh, one student team captain yeah, that one. works with the okay. teacher. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So one student team captain with the rest of the student uh, members, right? Yeah. And then they have on top of them their teacher facilitating, correct? Teacher, consultant, Good. yeah, consultant. And then the, the individual consultant. entry, the individual category on journalism, which is very fun to do, they could sign yeah. up on that category, plus mm -hmm. they could they have an option to join one team project. Clear? That's correct. That's correct. Good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. All yeah, right. you are okay, because I just, I'm just <laughs> receiving some, some different uh, private messages. And then okay. there are also questions here. So they said, is it all about environment, the PBL? So they, uh, this person yeah. has not explored yet the ACA. So the topic... No, no, no. Okay. Okay. It's not... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So go I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving some cue here. Go ahead. What are the okay. topics for the four projects? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, let me see. Okay. Uh, three of them are all related to environment. 
Okay. It's uh, about insect, about comeback climate change, and I think two of them are about insects. All right. They are they are very interesting uh, to do research to research about insects. The other one is very special. It's about uh, female gender inequality. Mm. They focus on uh, female aesthetic mm. in Olympic games, something like that. Okay. So it's not it's no, not the uh, environment. It's about inequality. Is it about gender equality? equality? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So right. Two, right, right. Two, two topics actually in general: environment yeah. and social science. Environment. Okay. It's all about science, right? That's correct. That's and correct. Yeah. also women. Oh, not women. Uh, it's gender equality. Gender, gender equality. Okay. That's so correct. I hope yeah. you have answered. But uh, but uh, I think all the project have to do something. They have to uh apply or exploit that kind of maker, that kind of skill. To make something up, yeah. That's true, and you could actually so the focus courses. Yes, go ahead, Dan. Uh, so the focus of that course, I, I don't know too much about it, but I think it's focusing on how they can make um, the gender more equal. Is that right? Like job wise or oh, uh, not really. They focus, they focus on, on sports, right? they, they sport. They only focus on sport. They focus on the performance or the the kind of uh, treatment. Uh, in uh, sport, in especially in Olympic game, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So they have to choose one uh, female athlete they like, and they try to uh, kind of uh, introduce the that female uh, uh, athlete, and then try to promote for for her something like that. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. So there's another question that 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 sent that is sent to me. It says, does it affect the school, the online classes? here in the Philippines, the way APA is uh, designed. So I would say from my perspective, knowing the content of the learning competencies in the Philippines, the Apex Cyber Academy actually complements well with the prescribed learning standards of the Philippines. And I believe not only the I Philippines, so. but also it's like a global, global, com uh, global I think so. yeah. So well, it correct. doesn't that's go correct. any against, but it actually complements well. All right, nah, so you just okay. have to identify which competences addresses it, which classes you could actually integrate it. It's, although it sounds like science, but if you're going to look at it, it's more than science. It also could touch That's about social studies. You can talk about politics, laws, right? Ethics, That's and correct. even for language, arts. So a lot about it, including That's correct. That's correct. It depends That's on how, okay. how you look at it. Again, if yeah, you look at you, how it's a it depends on how you integrate your, your curriculum. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Any other questions you're receiving from your end? All right. I don't have any private messages right now or on the video. Do you have more questions so we can wrap it up? Any more questions? Teachers, uh, feel free to raise your hand or mute your microphone. Okay. We have actually extended the time and thank you so much for that. Yeah, sure. All and right. you say we are going to take a Good picture, is that right? All right, all right. Is it okay if I ask you guys to turn on your video and smile for a few seconds? Oh, <laughs> not one second, a few seconds. All right, turn on your video, please. Oh, okay. All right. You mean a real smile or a fake smile? <laughs> from your heart. A anyway. Smile from your oh, heart. from my heart. Oh, a sincere <laughs> smile. Okay. Yeah, something <laughs> from your heart. <laughs> all right. Please do so, especially for those with their yep. videos. Okay. I'll count five sure. seconds in five. <laughs> but my counting is slow. Okay, five. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm waiting for that to turn 4. on. 4.5. <laughs> 4. All right. Lights, camera, video on. I can only see names, but that's okay. Smile, everybody. Smile.
Bye.